Hey guys, Tech King here, and today we're looking at an ultra value $90 smartphone. This is the Kogan Agora Lite, the smartphone I picked up for only 90 bucks because I was curious to see if you did your research. How much phone could you get for less than a tenth of a price of a brand new iPhone or Samsung Galaxy S7? And also, who would use a cheap phone like this? Let's start with the screen. The screen is a 5 inch 480p IPS panel. It doesn't sound so great on paper, but the screen on this phone has solid viewing angles and great color. Even though it's only 480p, streaming services like YouTube and Netflix still look great. And being a 5 inch phone means that it's pretty big. The phone also has a pretty general selection of ports and clicky buttons. It also has pretty reasonable speakers, but they are on the back, which means it's easily coverable. The 5 megapixel back camera is one of the worst cameras I have ever seen on a phone. And the 2 megapixel front camera is complete crap. Not even the best photographer could get this phone to produce the incredible shots or sensational selfies as described on the Kogan website. The back camera produces very computer generated images which means the photos come out blurry and of terrible colour. The camera up is also bad taking ages to focus and multiple useless camera features making the app buggy and slow. The software on the Agora is basically running stock Android 5.0 Lollipop, a full hardcore operating system. Kogan adds a few useless features to the phone's operating system, like stock apps for every single Google Play app, but they can be disabled and doesn't really matter to the average consumer. Android Lollipop includes the Google Play Store, which has millions and millions of apps that can be used on this phone. It's also running basically the latest software, and even though there haven't been many software updates since I got this phone, it runs pretty solid. For day-to-day -day tasks, this phone is great. Email, web surfing, music, video player back, and even a light 3D gaming is all possible with the Cortex A7 processor. And even though it only has a gig of RAM, it is very well managed with not much freezing or stuttering. It's not going to be nearly as fast as a Samsung Galaxy. It performs well for its price. The removable back cover shows off the 2100 mAh battery, which has reasonable battery life, generally lasting the full day with moderate use. And being removable, you can always swap in another battery when it's getting low. An annoying thing about the software is that it only has 8GB of storage of which 1GB is already taken by the software. But at least you can insert a micro SD card that can expand the, expand the storage up to 32GB. One of the best features of the phone is its dual SIM capability, which makes this phone great for travellers looking to avoid steep roaming charges with a local SIM card, but also don't want to miss out on important calls from their normal SIM card. Now with this phone you can use both, and you can choose which SIM is for data, calls and texts, etc even though it's only compatible with 3D networks. So the data speed isn't the fastest, but still usable. So to sum up, I feel this is the perfect phone for travelers looking to avoid roaming charges. It's also a really great spare phone, or a really good first phone for tease. Android might be a little too complicated for elderly though. Overall, this phone is really great for its price tag. For all Americans watching and wondering how to get this smartphone, it's not available anywhere but Australia. A great similar smartphone on Amazon, the Blue Advance 5.0, all links below. So I hope you enjoyed, please leave a like below and subscribe for more technology goodness. See you later.